Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel Dentistry to the Point. This is Dr. Drumil Manik. In the previous video, we discussed about the limiting structures. In this video, we are going to discuss about the supporting and the relief areas of maxilla. So, firstly, we'll start with the supporting areas and then we'll move on to the discussion of relief areas. So, the supporting areas are those which are going to help in the support of the denture, which will provide support to the denture जो भी areas denture को support provide करेंगे that will be categorized in the supporting area so the supporting areas are divided into two categories namely the primary supporting area and the secondary supporting area so each of this contains two two supporting structures so firstly the primary supporting areas consist of hard palate as well as the posterior lateral slopes of residual alveolar ridge and the secondary supporting area consists of maxillary tuberosity and palatine Okay, and next we'll discuss about the relief area. So, firstly, starting with the primary supporting area that is your heart palate. Now, the heart palate we all know that it is divided into anterior and posterior regions. So, the anterior region of palate is formed by the palatine shells of maxillary bone. जो भी palatine shells रहेंगे maxillary bone के दारा going to form the anterior region of palate. Now, they are going to meet at the center to form the median. So, ये दोनों सेल्स एक जगह सेंटर पे मिलेंगे एंड गोइंग टू फॉर्म व्हाट दे गोइंग टू फॉर्म द मीडियन सूचर द हॉरिजॉन्टल प्लेट ऑफ द पैलेटाइन बोन जो भी पैलेटाइन बोन की हॉरिजॉन्टल प्लेट है इट फॉर्म्स द पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द पैलेट सो दिस इज द एंटीरियर एंड पोस्टीरियर रीजन द पोस्टीरियर रीजन ऑफ द पैलेट इज कवर्ड बाय अ ग्लैंडुलर टिश्यू सो व्हिच विल हेल्प मोर इन द रिटेंशन ऑफ द डेंचर इन टर्न प्रोवाइडिंग द सपोर्ट so at last the horizontal portion of the heart palate lateral to the midline jo bhi horizontal portion hai heart palate ka which is on the both the sides of midline that is the mid palate and suture that is going to act as a primary support area for the denture i hope so this is clear the horizontal portion of palate jo bhi rahega midline mid palate and suture ke dono taraf that is going to act as your primary supporting area now how is or why is this acting as a primary supporting area because the trabecular pattern or the bony pattern in the heart palate is perpendicular to the direction of forces jo bhi trabecular pattern hai that is perpendicular to the direction of forces so that it can easily withstand the force which is acting on the bone the whatever the masticatory force is acting on the bone it is easily withstand so this is why the heart palate acts as a primary supporting area now the next or the second primary supporting area is your posterior lateral slopes of residual alveolar Ridge. Now, why? What is the term of uh, what is the term? What is the meaning of the term residual alveolar ridge? So that means the portion of alveolar ridge and its soft tissue covering which remains after the extraction. जो भी extraction हो गया है उसके बाद जितनी भी alveolar ridge बचेगी और उसके ऊपर soft tissue covering रहेगी that will be called as residual alveolar ridge. That is residual which is left alveolar ridge. now posterior lateral slopes that means the posterior region of the ridge along with the lateral slopes of the ridge that is the posterior lateral slopes of the ridge are going to act as a primary stress bearing area for the denture so this is about the residual alveolar ridge we will not discuss about the crest of the ridge in the earlier times the crest of the ridge was considered as the secondary stress bearing area but for now you just need to remember that the posterior lateral slopes of the residual alveolar ridge is going to be acting as a primary stress bearing area because the soft tissue or the submucosa present over the ridge has the adequate resiliency us tissues mein adequate resiliency hai taki wo denture ko support kar sake so just remember the posterior lateral slopes where the present and what is their role now next we are moving on to the secondary stress bearing area that is the palatine rugae and the maxillary tuberosity now what are palatine rugae that just the mucosal folds which are located in the anterior region of palatal mucosa kya hai ye ek sirf mucosal folds hai jo palatal mucosa ke anterior region mein present hai they are going to play an important role in secondary stress bearing area they are not the primary stress bearing areas they are your secondary stress bearing areas whatever uh, just consider a case of metal denture base If the denture base is made of metal instead of the acrylic, then it is going to very well accommodate in that area that is the palatine rugae area, and it will make very much comfortable for the patient to adjust with the process. So this is just a case or an example given, but just remember that the palatine rugae or जो भी रहेगे that just the mucosal folds and they are going to help in the secondary stress bearing 
area now next moving on to the maxillary tuberosity which is the second secondary stress bearing area so maxillary tuberosity kya hai ye ek bulbous extension hai kiska residual ridge ka i have already explained you the term residual ridge so it is a bulbous or round extension of residual ridge in which region ye kaun se region mein present hai so that is in the second and third molar region so the posterior part of the ridge and the tuberosity areas jo bhi posterior part rahega ridge ka और ट्यूब्रोसिटी एरियाज रहेंगे दे आर कंसीडर्ड एज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एरियाज ऑफ सपोर्ट क्यों व्हाई आर दिस कंसीडर्ड एज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एरियाज बिकॉज दे आर लीस्ट लाइकली टू रिजर्व दे आर लेस चांसेस दैट द मैक्सिलरी ट्यूब्रोसिटी एंड द पोस्टीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द रिज गेट्स रिजॉल्व वेरी इजीली द मीडियल एंड लैटरल वॉल्स जो भी मीडियल एंड लैटरल वॉल्स रहेंगे रिज के द मीडियल एंड लैटरल वॉल्स ऑफ रिज आर गोइंग टू रेजिस्ट द हॉरिजॉन्टल मूवमेंट जो भी हॉरिजॉन्टल मूवमेंट एक्ट करेगी दैट विल आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट द टॉर्किंग फोर्सेस ओवर द डेंचर व्हिच विल हेल्प और व्हिच विल लीड टू द डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द डेंचर इन लैटरल और पैलेटल डायरेक्शन सो वी हैव आल्सो स्टडीड दैट द डेंचर बॉर्डर शुड कवर द मैक्सिलरी ट्यूब्रोसिटी एंड इट शुड ऑल्सो आल्सो एनक्लोज द हैमुलर नॉट्स दिस पॉइंट इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट दैट द पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर और द पोस्टीरियर एक्सटेंशन ऑफ डेंचर शुड कवर द मैक्सिलरी ट्यूब्रोसिटी एंड हैमुलर not at last it is just an bulbous extension of residual ridge in second and third molar region which is acting as a second stress bearing area now there is one more thing which you guys need to know that is what is alveolar tubercle so it is just a rough prominence present behind the position of last tooth which was your last existing tooth uske piche jo bhi ek bony prominence present hogi that will be called as alveolar tubercle So these are your four supporting areas. That is the primary and secondary supporting areas. Now next we are moving on to the relief areas. Now what are relief areas? Relief areas are those areas which need to be provided relief during the fabrication of prosthesis. Now why it is necessary to provide relief to those areas? Because they are going to resorb under constant load. If a prosthesis is going to give constant load to those areas. those areas are very much fragile and the structures present beneath those areas are also very much fragile so they can't bear so much of constant load throughout the wearing of things so they need to be relieved all the masticatory load cannot be concentrated over those areas so you need to essentially relieve those areas for successful fabrication of the processes now which are your relief areas the relief areas are four that is your incisive papilla mid palate and raphe fovea palatina and cuspid eminence there are four relief areas we'll study them one by one firstly starting with the incisive papilla now what is incisive papilla this is just a midline structure which is present behind the central incisor now what is the significance of this it is an exit point of nasopalatine nerves and vessels kya hai which nerves and vessels are going to exit the nasopalatine nerves and vessels are going to exit through the incisive papilla now when you try to locate the incisive papilla in the edentulous ridge you can guess that how much amount of resorption has took place after the edentulous period of the patient is edentulous from that time then how much resorption has taken into those ridge so it is very much necessary to relieve those areas because if you not relieve these areas then the denture is going to compress the nerves and vessels which will lead to necrosis of those areas which is distributed by those nerves and vessels along with that it will also lead to paresthesia of anterior palate so it is very much necessary to relieve the incisive papilla if not then what is going to happen necrosis of those areas which are supplied by the nerves and vessels and also paresthesia of the anterior palate now next is your mid palate and raphe it is just a median suture covered by thin sub mucosa it should be relieved because it is very much a sensitive part you can't afford to provide so much on so much of load on that area it is very much sensitive part of the palate to pressure you can't provide so much of pressure so this is just about mid palate and raphe next is your fovea palatina now what is fovea palatina it is it is a structure again formed by the coalescence that is joining of ducts of several mucus glands several mucus glands are going to join and form a duct that is fovea palatina now this acts as an arbitrary guide now how will this fovea palatina help in fabricating the denture because it is going to act as an arbitrary guide to locate the posterior border of denture we have studied this point in the topic of posterior palatal seal differently also that the posterior border of denture is determined by fovea palatina you can extend your posterior border of denture 1 to 2 mm beyond the fovea palatina because the secretion of fovea palatina jo bhi uske secretions rahenge they are going to line at the posterior border 
वो पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर पे लाइन हो जाएंगे सारे सेक्रेशन और एक पेरिफेरल सील मेंटेन करेंगे जो डेंचर के रिटेंशन में काम आएगी विच विल हेल्प इन द रिटेंशन ऑफ डेंचर बट इफ अ पेशेंट इज हैविंग थिक रोपी सलाइवा देन यू कांट कवर दो एरिया बिकॉज दिस विल इंटर इंक्रीज द हाइड्रोसेटिक प्रेशर एंड यू विल लूज द रिटेंशन ऑफ द प्रोसेस इज जस्ट कीप दिस पॉइंट इन माइंड दैट द पेशेंट विथ थिक रोपी सलाइवा शुड द फोविया पैलेटिना शुड बी रिलीव नाउ द लास्ट स्ट्रक्चर विच आर लेफ्ट इज द कस्पिड एमिनेंस नाउ वॉट इज कस्पिड एमिनेंस it is a bony elevation of residual alveolar ridge you guys know what is residual alveolar ridge it is just a bony elevation which is formed after the extraction of canine whatever the extraction of canine took place after that a bony elevation is formed in that region which may be located between canine and premolar also but mainly in the canine region so this area should also be relieved so these are your four relief areas the supporting areas and in the previous video we discussed the limiting area so this was all about the anatomical landmarks of maxilla if you guys have understood then please like share and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video or this topic or any other topics then please let us know in the comment section and if you want any lectures on any other subject of prosthodontics then also let us know we would be more than happy to help you guys thank you